Thank you for joining me today. We're going to continue with the theme that was started by Jason on winning the war of the mind. Now, I think most people know the importance of the mind. If you watched any of the uh, uh, sporting tournaments over the last couple of weeks, say for example Wimbledon or something like that, you'll hear a commentator say it's all about mind games now. It's all about the person who's um, going to be able to keep positive. Or if you uh, watch the uh, England match against Italy, you will hear somebody say it's all about the will to win. And so I think it's um, fair to say that most of us understand the importance of having a correct mindset. Now, uh, you may be familiar, or maybe you're not, but uh, that idea comes straight out of the Bible. In Proverbs 23, 7, it says that as a man thinks, so he is. So the idea behind that is that uh, our thinking affects our actions and our thinking affects uh, the outcome of um, situations. Now the Apostle Paul um, describes um, the, what goes on in our mind as a war. I'm just going to read some uh, verses from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, you'll be familiar with these, but uh, it will help us just to get an understanding of how important uh, this issue is. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10 verses um, 3 to 4. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. The Apostle Paul points out to us that uh, we're in a war. And he also points out in this text where the war is located. And that it's located in the mind. And he describes uh, the mind as a place where, uh, well, it's a fortress. And it can be a stronghold. Now, strongholds of the mind um, can be described uh, in many ways, but um, we're, I think we're familiar with it. There are people who we find at times um, whose mind is made up. Before they ever hear anything about uh, a situation, their mind is made up. They've already decided what they think about something. Uh, or maybe it could be a prejudice that uh, we may have. Uh, we might not even know the people involved, but we may have something against a certain group or a certain person uh, and we make up our mind. Uh, my uh, wife, uh, Julie, likes her uh, little jokes at times and she brought a, a plaque um, around the time, I think, when we got married. And it says this, it says, When I married Mr. Wright, I didn't know that his first name was Always. And she had a good uh, laugh about that. But there's actually a truth in it. Because uh, for many, many years, I would always have thought um, about lots of situations that I was right. And I'll still come up with that expression now. But it has taken God many years to knock that out of me. Well, knock out of me the idea that I'm right uh, before I've uh, heard every side of a situation or before I even know what's going on and I think some of you will uh, recognize that. So we know that what goes on in our minds is very important and we see this uh, in, in scripture. Some of you will know the story of the uh, spies that went in to spy out the land uh, and uh, the report that they brought back. Uh, you'll find it in Numbers uh, chapter 14. And they, they came back with this report that, yes, it is a, a land uh, flowing with milk and honey. Yes, it's a great land. But in effect, what they said was, but well, there's giants in the land. Um, the Amalek is in the land. Uh, and um, they brought a report, which it says in uh, Numbers chapter 14, that the people wept that night. They wept because of what they heard. And uh, the people who brought back the report, there was 12 spies that went out and 10 brought back a bad report. And two, uh, Caleb and Joshua, tried to um, get them to change their minds, but it didn't work. And then that caused the people of Israel to go off into the wilderness wanderings 
for 40 years. So um, what we say, of course, is important, but what we think also is tremendously uh, important. And uh, there's other um, places that you can read. The psalmist uh, undoubtedly had a, a situation where he looked at himself and he felt that perhaps things were very negative within him. He says, well, why art thou in despair, O my soul? Um, and there was something going on within that person's mind and heart that was um, negative. So I think it's fair to say the mind is tremendously important. Now, I'm not going to pretend now that I'm uh, some sort of uh, psychologist and I'm going to start your mind out. But what I am going to do this morning is to share uh, a personal testimony about um, what's happened to me in relation to my mind, because I do have a story to tell about that. Some of you may have heard it before, but uh, it may be of help to you, and the reason I offer it to you is that it may be of help to you, and I will tie this in with scripture as well. But there was a time in my life when you could say a, a dark uh, cloud descended upon my mind, and I entered into a period of uh, severe depression, something that lasted over a period of two years in my life, and it affected my life so much that um, I had a, I was self-employed, I had a small business, but I, I lost all of that. I couldn't uh, work and I couldn't pay my bills, and I ended up living in the back of uh, somebody's garden in a caravan, and I didn't want to be out in the world. I couldn't cope with the world. Uh, my mind was so affected that um, I had lost the ability to um, speak in a coherent way. And I couldn't even write a legible sentence. I had been to the um, hospital, to the doctor, and they had uh, said that I had clinical depression. And as a young man, I, I wasn't happy to hear the doctor say, you will never recover from that. That was his uh, final words to me as I walked out of his uh, surgery. So I entered into a um, period, uh, I think it's uh, St. John of the Cross, a Spanish monk who called it the dark night of the soul. And it's a time of uh, desolation and uh, disconnection from the world and a time of uh, hopelessness. And that is what that time certainly was like for me. Now, I did have some, um, and I have to find out, I was a believer in Jesus at this time. Um, but this is what happened to me. Now, I had some uh, godly people around me who uh, were seeking to help. And that's why I was able to live in somebody's caravan in the back of their house. Um, but they understood very little about uh, how to help in this matter. And so they would say to me such things as, uh, well, you know, um, pull your socks up, um, uh, sort yourself out. And um, it was the very thing that I just could not do. They would say things to me um, that I need to sort myself out and I just, I couldn't do that. So I was in uh, a state. I entered a world where people were routinely seeking to uh, commit suicide. And I'm not going to go into uh, details about that, but uh, I'm for, I have to say I attempted that on my own life and I was very disappointed when uh, it didn't work. And so that was my state at that time. So I, uh, but one day I took a walk into the city. I wasn't living in this country at the time. I took a walk into the city. And as I was walking into the city, I met a, a friend there who had a, a young woman with him and he sought to introduce me uh, to her. He thought that maybe I'd be interested in saying hello because uh, she came from New Zealand and I had spent some years in Australia. And so he thought we might have some um, interest in talking together. So the young lady, her name was Karen, and she asked me a question, uh, just as an introduction. She just said, well, how are you? As we might uh, say that to people. And because of that morning I had tried to write something and I couldn't write a legible sentence, I actually responded by saying, well, I think I'm losing my mind. And uh, immediately uh, Karen uh, replied and she says, well, you know, the uh, Bible says, but uh, we've not got a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. 
And as soon as she said that, something happened to me. It was almost like I woke up. Uh, it was like as if a light burst into my mind and I seemed to um, come back to myself. You know, uh, the Bible is um, called that. It says, well, the Bible says in, in the Psalms, uh, Psalm 119, that's it, 119 verse 130. It says, the entrance of your word brings light. And that's exactly what it was. Karen was a Christian woman who uh, knew the Bible and she's spoken out and that word entered my mind and into my heart and it produced light inside. Uh, you know, uh, that's how I describe it because that's what happened. Uh, there's another verse in uh, Hebrews 4 verse uh, 12. It says that the word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword piercing between the soul and the spirit, the giants and the marrow, and judging the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The Word of God, living and active, set me free that day. Now, um, I, I'm describing to you what happened. So there I am. I seem to um, wake up from something that had lasted two long years, or maybe even a bit more, but two years is what I remember. And I found myself uh, now, what I felt was in my right mind. Well, uh, Karen, it turned out, uh, was a Christian believer of a different uh, group than I had been used to. And um, she understood some things that uh, perhaps my group didn't understand or my church didn't understand. So I met some of her friends and I, I learned some things there. And I'm going to pass some of these things on to you now that I hope will be of uh, help to you. And what I learned was this, that um, in general, uh, the things that I um, said and the things that I thought about were very, very negative. So my mind and my speech was in general very negative. Uh, and uh, there's lots of um, Christians like that because the Bible, of course, is very positive. But uh, for example, you know, it says in Philippians, uh, where does it say that now? 4.13, I think it is. Um, some of you will correct me, I'm sure. Uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know that verse. And um, I would say that I can't do all things. But the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So in my mind, I'm thinking I can't. But the Bible says I can. So what they um, taught me at that time was that I need to match up, um, to change my speech, in line with the Word of God. So I need to think about what the Word of God is saying, and I need to match up my speech with what the Word of God is saying. Now, if you think about this, um, um, God, now sometimes I think maybe we feel that God is just like us. But the Bible actually says he's not like us. He's different than us. It tells us in Isaiah 55, um, verse uh, 8, it is, it says that uh, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways. And um, in verse 7 before that, it tells us, uh, let the wicked forsake his way and to change his um, thoughts. In fact, I'm quoting that wrong now, so I'm going to uh, look it up and I'm going to read it because it's an important verse. Yes, in verse 7 it says this, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him. So the thing there is, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Now look, if God's thoughts are different than ours, are higher than ours, and um, he is different than us, um, who should change their ways? Should God change his way for us, or should we change our ways for him? If he has the right way of looking at things and the right way of thinking about things, who should change? The obvious answer is it should be us. <laughs> and that is the process of repentance. Change your ways. Turn around and go in God's way. So that's something that I learned. I learned that um, there's a, a verse in Amos 3 verse 3. It was a very important verse for me at the time. And it was, it says simply this, King James says it this way, and the new version says it's slightly different, but it means the same thing. It says, can two 
walk together unless they are in agreement uh, or can two walk together unless they are agreed and the obvious answer the inference is no <laughs> if you don't agree with somebody it's very difficult to go out walking with them now walking is one of those activities where people uh, go out walking together and they don't have to say much to each other they just go and they're in harmony they're walking along when Julie and I go out for a walk, we don't have to talk too much. We're walking in harmony. That's the same idea. The Bible has the idea of walking with God. Enoch, it says, walked with God. And it tells us in Genesis 5 that uh, he was not there for God took him. I think I heard somebody say many years ago um, that um, God said to Enoch, well, it's closer to my house than your house now. Why don't you come up here? But it contains the idea in that story of walking in harmony with God. Now I put it to you, you can't walk in harmony with God if you don't agree with what he says. So we go back to that uh, verse I mentioned in Philippians where it says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and I guarantee you that there's someone out there saying I can't do all things. So in a simple way um, I'm wanting to find out to you, you're not agreeing with God. And so you've got to bring your thoughts in line with what God says. Now that's something that I learned. And I then learned that I had to speak out what the Word of God says about me. So very often there's things going on in our minds that are so negative uh, where we're telling ourselves, or somebody's telling us, how useless we are, um, how nobody loves us, how um, nobody uh, wants to know us. Yet God says about us, if you're a believer in Jesus, if you're a follower of Jesus, if you have received him into your life, it says you are a child of God. It tells us in Ephesians uh, chapter 1 that you're adopted into his family. You're a child of God. And so you need to begin to hear yourself sometimes to say, I am a child of God. There's a great uh, song that uh, Julie plays. Julie plays loads of songs and it's, it's really quite nice to hear it. But it, it has that um, uh, phrase in it all the time. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. And I find that uh, song so helpful at times. Now, you might find it strange to speak out something that you don't feel. Or you may not even feel is really um, true in your experience but if you've received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior then it is true you're a child of God now look take Abraham as an example you might say what's Abraham uh, got to do with it well Abraham's name means father and uh, whenever Sarah would call his name she'd be calling him father um, but Go on a few years into Abraham's life, he received a promise that he would um, be the father of many nations and that he would, he and Sarah would have a child. Uh, of course, we know the story, he, they were too old for that. But um, in time that came about. But before that came about, God changed his name and he's changed his name to Abraham. And what does Abraham mean? Abraham means father of a multitude. Well, can you imagine the scene as um, maybe Sarah or a servant might come out of the tent and call out Abraham across the valley and the name would mean father of many, father of multitudes. Well, if you're a, a neighbor, you might be saying, well, that's a funny one, isn't it? There's Abraham and Sarah. They've got no children. And yes, his name is father of multitudes. Well, I didn't seem to bother him. And uh, God, of course, fulfilled his promise. But my point here is this, that um, we need to speak out what maybe doesn't feel right for us. And yet it is true according to the word of God. And in the end, that is the only truth. If you're a Christian, you need to have, and I'm suggesting this to you now, and I'm telling you, a biblical worldview. Uh, not have a, a view that is formed by the world around you, but have a view that is formed by what the Bible says, and that is called the biblical worldview. I'm sure you know this, but just in case you don't, I'll let you know. Adjust your mind and adjust your thinking according to the Word of God. So that's the uh, one of the first things that I really learned about, 
uh, and um, to go on now and try and give you some practical things because Paul says this is a war <laughs> and we need to win the war uh, of the mind. So I discovered agreeing with God uh, as crucial to this. And then I discovered too the uh, understanding really that uh, Jesus lives within me. He is the resurrected Christ, the great power of God is living within me. I have all that I need to overcome. Um, in Romans it tells us that we are more than conquerors. Well, I have to say there was times I never felt like even a conqueror or more than a conqueror. But the Bible says that's what I am. And I needed to understand that more. And I understand that more now by understanding the role and the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life. For him to fill me. Uh, to overflowing. Now, you may understand the filling of the Holy Spirit in so many different ways, and I'm not going to go into that uh, this morning. But one thing I want to ask you is this. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you understand his power in your life? Is it evident in your life? We can talk to the, we used to say in Ireland, we can talk to the cows come home. But if the power of God is not seen in your life, it is not evident in your life, you can talk all you like is the power of the Holy Spirit there. And we simply have to ask him to fill us with himself, to be filled up with all the fullness of God, Paul talks about in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, I think it is, tells us to be filled with the Spirit. It's a continuous filling of the Holy Spirit. You may have come to an understanding of that at some point in your life, but you need to go on being filled with the Spirit. So that was another thing I came to understand. And just to... Um, to move on now to uh, say to you, think about what you're thinking about. Paul in that uh, text in uh, Corinthians talks about bringing every thought captive to the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about what you're thinking about. What's going on up there? Analyze it. Not every thought is, the, is worth even letting into your mind. We used to say that, uh, you know, we can... The, the birds can fly around my head, but uh, they don't, I don't have to let them nest there. I don't have to let them stay there. It's the same thing with our thoughts. They may fly around, but we don't have to let them stay there. Now, I did hear a good illustration that your mind is like uh, an air traffic control tower. And um, you've got the choice as to what planes land in your mind. And if uh, you're getting a cargo of negativity... Uh, approaching your air traffic control tower you're going to say no I want to reroute that and tell it to go while well, you do that in the name of Jesus you bring it to Jesus and you say Lord here's my thoughts they're so negative I just bring them to you that's a simple thing to do now I have to tell you it's a war this may not be easy for you you might have to do that 50 times a day but you will win that war because you will be heading in the right direction uh, and you'll be doing things that will be positive. So think about what you think about. And I'm going to uh, finish with uh, something now that uh, you've all seen. Uh, you know that um, the, the, the acronym where it says calm. Keep calm and carry on. If you've seen that, it used to drive me mad when I see it all the time. Keep calm and carry on. Um, actually, the word calm can be very useful for us. We can use it as an acronym to think about um, winning the war in our mind and what goes on, uh, a process, if you like, of um, being positive. So if we think about the C in calm, um, C stands for celebrate God. Think about all that God has done. Think about all his goodness towards us. Think about his faithfulness towards us. Think about who he is. He's the creator of the world. He's God Almighty. He's the, the God who wins the battles for us. It says in Isaiah, he will arise like a mighty man with a shout and drive out our enemies. That's the language the Bible uses about God. Think about God, his goodness, his faithfulness, his gentleness, his fatherhood. He is your father. Think about God. Celebrate, excuse me, celebrate who God is. And then the A stands simply for ask. Remember Peter when he was um, he came out of the boat and he was sinking, he just simply cried out, help! <laughs> ask, ask God. Uh, it tells us in um, Matthew chapter 5, it says, Ask and you shall receive, 
seeking you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened to you. Simply ask. If you ask the Lord to help you, uh, then he will. And I think I had a text uh, on this and I've forgotten what it is. Where is it? Let me see. Um, no, I've forgotten it. Never mind. Um, here's a good um, text to look at uh, when you've got time. Psalm 77. It celebrates who God is and what God has done for us. And can I encourage you to read the Psalms? The Psalms are the uh, prayer book of Israel and it's, it's full of uh, hope and full of praises and it's full of real life like the one I mentioned to you, Psalm 42. Why are you in despair, O my soul? But then he says, I will yet again praise him. And that was the hope of that person. It can be your hope as well. So that's A and then L. Well, L is leave the issue with God. Uh, Peter says, cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. So when you uh, have all this stuff going on in your mind and it's usually it's problems and issues and difficulties, cast it all upon the Lord. That's what Jesus said. He says, come unto me all ye that labour and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. That's his promise to us. And we can find rest for our souls. I was trying to find a verse earlier. It was, it's in the Psalms where it says, When my heart is overwhelmed within me, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I can't remember where it is, but some of you might be able to find it. When my heart is overwhelmed within me, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I used to find that verse so helpful. Leave everything with the Lord. And then finally, final thought is the M. What's the M stand for? The M is to meditate upon something that's good. I'm going to read a text for you now from uh, Philippians chapter 4. You may be aware of it. In fact, Philippians 4 verse 6 to 8 is really good for us. I'll read it. It says this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And then uh, verse 8 tells us, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there's any excellence and of anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. Let your mind dwell on the things that are good. Now, that takes... Um, action it takes effort but you can do it because we can do all things through christ who strengthens us just a final thought now on this you know um, it's much easier if you follow what the bible says in romans 12 verse 1 and 2 it tells us to um, present ourselves as a, a living sacrifice uh, acceptable to god or oh, present your bodies it says sorry i'm misquoting it. it says present your bodies as a living sacrifice and then it tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Our minds will be renewed as we allow the word of God into our lives and as we follow the word of God and as we apply the word of God. You know, friends, no good just listening to me today. Apply what I'm showing you. Uh, find out for yourself. Be as the Bereans. Check out the Bible for yourself and see if it is true. Apply what you see in the Bible. So when it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, test it out, have a go, apply it, and then call upon the Lord and ask him to help you. Oh, let, don't let me forget God's telephone number under that one for help. That's what I was thinking about. It's Jeremiah 33.3. We used to call it Jeremiah 3.3.3. Call to me and I will answer, God says, and I will show you great and mighty things. Call to me. And I will answer. That's God's promise to you and I. He is a God who is faithful. He is a God who keeps his promises. And look, that doctor was wrong about me. I haven't had depression uh, since I was uh, set free from it. And that's over 30 years ago. It was four, it's more actually, probably 35 years ago. Um, and the word of God set me free. The word of God can set you free. And that doctor got it wrong. I wish I could see that doctor again say, you got it wrong. And uh, he was doing his job, doing what he knew to be doing. But uh, here I am, and uh, my mind is um, in a much different place now than it ever used to be. But it's, it is still a battle, and you've got to be 
Like in any battle, you've got to be wary and watchful. But it starts with, I was telling you about Romans 12. This is where it starts. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Christian life is about giving your life over to God. It's not about yourself. It's not about what suits me. It's not about how I feel. It's not about is everything working out okay for me. It's nothing like that. It's not about how will God give me what I need for my life. No. It's about signing up to Jesus and following him. Because Jesus died on a cross for you and I. He died for us so that our sins could be forgiven. He died for us so that we could uh, be made right with God. Jesus died on a cross for you. He gave up his life for you. And as he died on that cross, he saw you because he loves you, because he cares for you, because he wants you to be with him in eternity. Like the thief on the cross. The thief on the cross who turned to him and recognized that Jesus was a good man and not just a good man, but he didn't deserve to be there. And he says, remember me this day when you come into paradise. And in that statement, he realized that Jesus was the eternal God and that he uh, was from another world, another realm. And Jesus says to me, this day you'll be with me in paradise. That's the great news of the cross. The cross of Jesus Christ is what set me free because Jesus not only died on the cross, but he rose again and he is alive today. If you haven't come to a place where you recognize that Jesus died for you and loves you and cares for you, where he recognized that the only way that you can be right with God is through the cross, that you are, a, you are a sinner. The Bible says it. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Um, we know that, that we, we fail and we fall, but it's, this is an issue of between uh, failing with God and his standard. God has a remedy. It's the cross of Jesus Christ, where Jesus became an exchange for us. He became sin on our behalf, that we would have the righteousness and the goodness of God in our lives. Friends, look at the cross. The cross is the great place where the power of God is displayed and the love of God is displayed for you. Surrender your life to him. If you're a Christian today and you've not surrendered your life and you've uh, received Jesus as Lord, then do so. I have to say to you, I don't know how a person can say they're a Christian and not have Jesus as Lord in their lives. But if you do that, it will save you from all the stuff about, well, what suits me? Uh, this doesn't suit me. Oh, I don't feel great about this and whatever. Give your life over to the Lord. He knows uh, what's best for you anyway. He knows how to direct our steps. It tells us in the Bible to commit our way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will do it. And that's my final bit of advice now. Commit your way to the Lord. That's something that you've got to do. Trust also in him. That's something you've got to do. And he will do it, it says in the Bible. And that's something that he will do. Well, I hope that these things have been helpful to you today. Let's just uh, finish now with prayer and uh, perhaps you will mull over some of these things I've been talking about. God bless you. So, Father, we just uh, thank you today that uh, you come into our lives and you change our lives. We thank you that you've said that I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. And I pray for anybody today that is struggling in their mind, that is struggling with uh, depression, and the struggling with negativity, that the power of the Lord Jesus will reach right down into the depths and the darkness of their mind and pull them out. That you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. We just thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much for listening to me.